toward the sea. And he went and looked, my God, and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. Somebody say seven times. Seven times. And it came to pass after the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arise a little cloud out of the sea. I want you to underline where the cloud came from. It came from an unusual place. But it came from the source of the very thing that they were in need of. Many people have preached this sermon, but they never looked at where the rain came from. The Bible said that the cloud came out of the sea like a man's hand. Somebody say, look out, the hand of God is about to come upon you. Uh, and he said, go up and say unto Ahab, uh, prepare ye the chariot and get down, uh, uh, that the rain stopped thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds, the wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab arose and went to Jezreel. If I had to uh, just really minister from the subject today, are you ready for the rain? All right now. Are you ready for the rain? Look at your neighbor and ask about two other people that you were in the proximity of. Are you ready for the rain? Today I didn't come to talk to everybody. I came to talk to people who are going through dry seasons uh, that they have been going through for a while. And to ask you, are you prepared for the rain? Do you value the rain now that you have been without it for a season in your life? And what are you going to do different now that you're about to receive uh, it again? Uh, one of the most important things that I need to implement in this time to you is that the rain is a type and a shadow of the blessing. Look at your neighbor and say the rain is a type and a shadow of the blessing. It's a rain, the rain is a type and a shadow of the blessing. Look at your neighbor and say, are you ready for the blessing? You can have your seat. What I would like to minister to you today is, is very noteworthy because that there's a reason uh, that the rain or the blessing stopped flowing in the life of the people of God. The Bible makes it known in uh, chapter number 17 all the way through into chapter number 18. Have you seen into chapter number 18 that, that God is bringing judgment upon the land because of the evil doing of the people. Uh, and many times people misinterpret and misunderstand the very essence of judgment or the very purpose of judgment. Judgment is never to destroy you. Judgment is to develop you. Look at your neighbor and say God is trying to develop us. One of the things that you must really grab a hold to is many times in life, many times in ministry, God has to develop us for what's getting ready to take place. And I come to preach to a handful of folk today that have their mind made up that this dry sea that I've been experiencing is getting ready to change. Is there anybody in here? I'm not talking to everybody, but I'm talking to a handful of folks that know that the dry season that you have been in is getting ready to change. There's a reason for a season. Anytime God takes you through a dry season, he's trying to develop your character. He's trying to develop your faith in God's ability to shift your situation and to change your circumstances. Look at your neighbor and say, God, getting ready ready to shift this thing. I feel like preaching in a minute I might preach, but first God has to do something in the earth when judgment has come upon the land because of the evil doing of mankind. The first thing that takes place is God utilizes the prophet. In James chapter number five, the Bible makes it known that Elijah was a prophet or was a prophet with a, a like passions unto us. And he prayed earnestly and God locked up the heavens for three and one half years. Three and one half years is a type and a shadow of the tribulation period in the Bible. 
The first tribulation period in the Bible lasts three and one half years, meaning that the people of God go through an 18 uh, uh, no, actually they go longer than that, excuse me. They go through a time frame of uh, three years is 36 months, so a 42 month period uh, of going through a drought. Can you imagine being on the face of the earth and for 42 months receiving no rain, receiving no blessing, uh, receiving nothing to reproduce or nothing to replenish the earth and finding yourself in a place where you are unproductive, finding yourself in a place where you're not bringing forth anything, being frustrated, not having any idea of how long you're going to be in this situation and not having any idea of will you survive the situation. I need to talk to some folks that very survival is in jeopardy right now. I don't understand what's going on. I don't know why I'm in this dry season and I, I don't really even know whether I'm going to survive it or not. But I thank God Almighty when we get in situations and circumstances that are beyond our comprehension and our ability to figure out that we do have prophetic utterances in the earth. The Bible says that the man that God got an unction from God. Somebody said an unction from God. See, the church don't get unctions no more. Well, what is an unction from God? An unction is when the Spirit of God is communicating something to the Spirit of mankind by revealing it, watch this, through his five natural senses. See, your spirit reveals to your five natural senses. Well, what are your five natural senses? Prophet Jones said they were hearing, they were sight, they were smelling, they were tasting and that was touching. The Bible says that he was able to discern what was getting ready to take place uh, through his hearing. Uh, the Bible says that he said that there was a sound uh, of an abundance of rain. Now, uh, in the natural realm, there was no rain. Uh, but in his spirit, watch this here, God was revealing to him what was getting ready to take place in the earth before it took place. Uh, he heard the truth drops of rain hitting the earth even before it manifested in the physical realm. He had already had an unction, a revelation. He had already been exposed and revealed to his spirit by the spirit of God. Ain't nobody saying nothing. See, you ought to know what's going on in the spirit before it manifests itself in the night. That some stuff ain't supposed to happen without you knowing about it, without you forecasting without you foreseeing it, without you foreknowing it, ain't nobody saying nothing. I wish somebody in here was anointed enough in the Holy Ghost every once in a while. You get an unction from the Holy Ghost and say, boy, you ain't going to that party because I, I, I feel like something in the We ain't going over there because some mess can jump out. Ah, he come. I'm say, no, no, baby, we're not going to spend no money on this right now. We need to put that back because something might ah, my fingers are shredded, so I'm losing rain. You got to realize that the Holy Ghost will give you unction of things that are getting ready to take place. The reason that God gives my wet man ain't come off them. You got to know that I'm up with God. You got to realize something that God will give you unction so nothing won't creep up on you. He said, when He, the Spirit of Truth, has come, He will reveal things to come. God ought to let you know what's getting ready to happen. That's why I don't trip out. That's why I don't lose my mind. That's why I'm calling everybody on the phone, talking about nobody knows the trouble that I see. Because I get an unction from the Holy Ghost. If you can endure hardship as a good soldier, I'm getting ready to change your circumstance. I'm getting ready to turn your situation around. I'm getting ready to rock your world. If you can just hear what God is saying, you won't fight through the time of adversity. You won't lose your mind when things look like they're not working for you. Because when things are not working for you in the spirit, you got to know that God is up to something. My God, you want to hear what I'm saying? When things are not working for you in the spirit, and not working for you in the natural, you got to know that your God is up to something. I preach the message when you're down to nothing. God is up to something. My God, I need to be talking to somebody. You can't see God, but you got an option down on. You can't give up. Sometimes you can't see your way, but you can't give up because you got an option from the Holy One that God getting ready to turn it. It don't feel good, but I just got a feeling, my God, that everything is going to be all right. It's going to be all right. So once he gets an option, from the spirit of God, he has to value 
validate 